Hello, everybody, and welcome to Connor's Retribution Analysis, CRA for short, which was intentional. And I've got Gareth, too, in Legions of Dawn. i um, starting to uh, get warmed up for Gareth, too, which I'm pretty excited about. There's going to be a lot more games coming down the pipeline. I just, I want him in my life type of deal. Across from me is Shea Pirates uh, CID Latest Edition. There are some proxies. Uh, I apologize ahead of time, but they're actually pretty easy to tell. These guys are the Shard Pirates. Gibbs is the officer. Shard Pirates and officers, the Idrian officer. These guys are press gangers, and then there is an actual unit of press gangers that are ambushing. That is the uh, Scallywagger uh, Lightjack. Two freebooters, and this basher is also a freebooter. It'll make more sense as the game goes on. Everything else is pretty much represented as it is. So, I had the pleasure of talking about my opponent's list before I got into the game, and it's really, really scary, and I would not have guessed it. So, the list is 22-inch threat assault sprays that are rat seven pow 14 and there's like 22 of them and that that i mean most vanilla stat models that just absolutely obliterates and it actually through chip damage and volume can get a lot of other things that have a little bit of a defense skew or a little bit of an armor skew it doesn't want to see the extremes either end of the skews but it it can apps its threat range is a, a, a incredible and when you're looking at the list it's coming from six inch sprays 22 inches on six inch sprays that is ridiculous normally if i was going first and i didn't know anything about this list uh the shea list i would ask him hey what's your melee range and he'd say well i've got coop domain and i've got a feet of three inches so take nine and a half you add five inches you got 14 and a half and then i'd get my whole army outside of 14 and a half and i'd be right about there um and then the salt sprays would come in and i'd lose my entire army uh turn one pretty much that's 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 the ridiculous threat range of this list because my army could have gone up to right about here and i i could have actually gone into his uh spray range i had to hold back my desters and we're going to talk about this concept more because it's an ongoing threat to my list throughout the entire game because i talked to them about it i kind of knew what i was getting into so the commodore cannon is a real deal threat and it is, uh, I've got this forest in the way. So this unit over here of Desters, I placed so with force barrier, just in case he gets some janky idea um, to maybe help them a little bit. I put him so the Commodore can wouldn't be able to get line of sight. Over here on these Desters, I put them in occultation. Uh, I put occultation on them so the Commodore Cannon can't shoot these guys and just slam a Dester over Sentinels and do POW 16s to all my Sentinels and just wipe out all of them. Uh, it, every single Sentinel that, that would hit would absolutely kill. So I'm completely out of threat range there. Um, if he wants to pop feet just for the Commodore Cannon, he can get a Dester to get slammed over the Sentinels. I would be perfectly okay with that. That makes the threat ranges a lot easier to work with later on in the game for me. Um, but yeah, if I move my desters, um, another, actually these two desters are in the shard pirates threat ranges coming in from this direction right now. I'm, I, I'm trying to debate, bait a bad feat a little bit, which he was debating. I think if I had put my other desters up there, he would have gone feet and just killed all my desters, slam and dester over sentinels and just gutted my list before I even got to play the game. That's the threat range we're looking at on this list right now. Uh, even going second, if you just take your army and run forward and you die to Rat 7, POW 14s, 22 of them, you're probably in a bad place. And there's sprays, so it, it's a ridiculous number of shots. The feat benefit of placing AOE 3s, um, I was able to make it to limit it because I had Eris right here, and that limited where he could put them, which was nice for me. Um, nothing is really in the press gamer, threat, press gamer threat range on the side of the board, which is pretty sweet. So for his turn, let me see if I can remember this. I don't think he really does anything. He's looking at my threat ranges. He puts out a Vila Mist right here to try and limit my retaliation, gets his jacks up here, and just kind of moves up the board. Um, he wants to stay out of a lot of my charge ranges. The press gangers that were in the front right here, 
they are just meant to die and get thrown away. And so that's what happens. He runs them all up into here uh, to be annoying and die and get thrown away. Whoa. So for my turn, it's definitely going to be a feat turn because no matter, unless I take my army and walk it off the board, he's going to be able to get to my army. So I'm going to have to make the most of the Gareth feat. The way I've got some debates with Gareth too. Um, I'm worried about getting assassinated, but I don't want to move him back. I want to sacrifice movement, get my good 14 inch bubble that's out here and we'll lock him out of zones. And then, uh, toss mortality on this unit of press gangers who absolutely have to go because I don't want more of them. So that's that's more or less what I do. I put mortality on them, I shoot them to death, and then I create a layered wall. Since he has six inch sprays and a whole unit has to move first even with the assaults, if I have my layers of dudes be six inches apart, he won't be able to have landing spots to spray the second layer. And um, I can get more feed shots and I can really lessen and dampen his output uh, if he decides to just go all in on me. And that's more or less what happens. I kill that whole unit of press gangers except for the last who I forget about back there. And um, I just shoot some guys over here who all four up tough. They don't care, which is why I absolutely need mortality. Makes it so I can hit and it takes away their four up tough. So uh, I've got a roughly a feet bubble of right about here and I have armor piercing on Gareth. So for his turn, he walks these shard pirates up uh, just out of my range and pretty much removes all of this. Then he walks, uh, for, Hawk goes flying in to Eris, uh, Sentinel retaliatory strikes. I roll the eight I need and I kill her or defensive strikes basically. We're using the feet. Garrus feed is all models in my control range get black penny and can make a basic ranged or melee attack against enemy models that are in my control range if they enter it with an advance not a placement um, or a push or anything like that so that's how the sentinel is able to hit first mate hawk uh scallywag does a advance or sorry uh advance and jumps uh or sorry no it just it just flat out jumps and uh I'm drawing that incorrectly. It jumps into the Dester, and I think it kills the Dester. Freebooter charges Eris, and Gareth, too, decides to shoot it, and he knocks out its arm and does 12 damage with armor-piercing shot. Felt super good, guys. Oh, man, that felt fantastic. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that just made my day. A POW-14 armor-piercing on a defensive strike is freaking phenomenal. Um, so that was cool. He also missed his boosted to hit on Eris, so Eris lived. Also, Eris, um, how did that freebooter get there? Oh, sorry, it was this freebooter right here that did it. Uh, this freebooter was disrupted by Eris last turn, but this freebooter came in on Eris. This freebooter just walked up, and the Commodore cannon shot the, uh, uh, Dester, planning to slam it into this Dester over here. You only rolled a one, a two would have slammed it into him. So this Dester died. Uh, and then this freebooter came in over here and killed both of those freebooters. I took a shot with one of my Desters and I accidentally hit the other Dester and did four damage to it, but it didn't matter anyways because the freebooter just killed it. So lost a lot of Desters. Um, didn't really get to use my feet much, but the important thing is, is he didn't come into me and kill me because if he did, if he did do the assault, there was, um, a lot of debate about whether assault would trigger before my feet gunshot or not. And we found a ruling on privateer press about how all models do their movement and then they do the assault shot. So when they end their movement, that's when I would get to do for each one of them, I would get to do my shots. And so I'd get to kill them before they got to make their assault shots. Um, but yeah, yep, 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 yep. Board looks like this. So that's pretty good. I feel pretty good about that. The dice mark his fee range. I got cleared out. I mean, that was just a very small taste of the power of the Shea list into me. So new plan. Um, I have two methods to close this game out this turn right now. 
I think attrition is pretty bad for me with mortality and the four up tough. I think I can only kill one unit a turn reliably. And I've got some jacks in my face that I need to get rid of. I lost a lot of power as well. I lost a lot of my list surprisingly despite my feet turn being up. Um, while I'm making my plan, um, Sentinels right here go crazy with the vengeance rolls and kill that freebooter, which is awesome. I didn't expect that, but cool, whatever. Um, I've got, I scored one point on this flag. He scored nothing. So my plan is, is to score that flag, score this zone, score this zone, kill his objective, and I win five to zero. In order to do that, I need to kill the objective, kill this freebooter, kill those four guys, and kill these four guys. And I've got my whole army to do it. So, oh, these five guys over here. Because there's five guys over here, I think, and they have Phantasm up, so they're harder to shoot. I decided I want to get Mortality over there and try and reliably kill them with Sentinels. Um, so, uh, but that's one method of winning. The other method of winning, if I can get rid of this one guy right there that is four up tough, Moros can road to war over here and take a boosted shot at Shea. If that boosted shot hits Shea and his defense goes to five, uh, Eris can then walk over here, disruptor bolt him, and then my entire army can just shoot him to death. He doesn't have sack pawn or anything crazy like that. He does have, um, I think he has a special rule where if he gets knocked down, he doesn't lose any defense, and I think he gains feign death. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But in my head when I was doing this assassination run, I was super paranoid about um, this guy right here toughing all my shots because I can only get like two or three shots over there that I want to put into Shea anyways. Him toughing and not dying and then the whole assassination run being no good and me not being able to go for the scenario win. So that scared me. The other fear was that I missed the Moro shot. And then the last fear is that um, Shea toughs. And then um, if Shea toughs and he's knocked down and I can't target him because I couldn't remember if he had feign death or not, the entire assassination run falls apart. So if any of those things fall apart and I'm screwed, it really, really worries me. There's also the chance that Imperatus could just straight get to him and I would kind of be holding that in the bag. Um, I didn't think about that. I, I'm just seeing that now with Road to War and his sidestep through our range, that's actually pretty good and pretty valid. And I'm really kicking myself for not seeing that at the moment. Whoa. Man, I wish I had done that. Anyhow, I chose to go the scenario route because it felt pretty reliable. Uh, because there's more dudes over here and they have Phantasm over, I uh, get... Uh, after the Vengeance attacks, Sentinels are out of the way. Gareth walks up, puts Mortality on him. He hits, shoots one of them, and then walks over uh, into the zone to score the zone. Sentinels go in and kill off all of them. They also kill off the objective. So, so far, three of my four points I need have been achieved uh, using very little of my list. Uh, Gareth is sitting in the trench right here on a two camp. I dropped Road to War and I also dropped um, Occultation so that he could be a little bit more survivable. So now what I need to do is get rid of this Freebooter and get rid of these four pirates. Imperatus comes up, takes care of the Freebooter, and almost he leaves the uh, Scallywag on one box. Uh, good job, Imperatus, and he's also touching the zone to score it. So he is primed. He is ready to go. Uh, Dester. Um, oh, sorry. He left this freebooter on uh, two boxes. And he also left the scallywag on like 10 boxes or something. This Dester right here charges the freebooter, kills it with a charge attack, and then shoots that guy who toughs. This uh, Dester over here charges the scallywag. Um does he charge this? No, he doesn't charge the scallywag. I think he walks over to here and takes a shot at this guy, and I miss. Uh, so, so far, I uh, just used a lot of my pieces and have not gotten the work done that I needed. Moros can go in on these guys and kill one or two, probably, depending on tough rolls. So, 
Ghost Sniper walks over here, and I realize that Deadly Shot ignores Tough, so I am very happy with myself at that moment. Shoots this guy right here, taking care of him. That's one guy down. Eris then walks into the forest over here behind Imperatus, shoots the guy on the right, taking care of the other guy. So now I just have two guys left in that zone. I can't get the Ghost Sniper that's over here. Um, I can't get him there to take that shot. It's just, it's not in the cards. Artificer's too far away. Everything else has gone besides Moros, and I have two people left. Um, and it's at this moment that I realize it's all or nothing because I'm going to lose my entire army or just get assassinated if this does not work out. So, Moros charges, uh, hits and kills, and he does not tough the first guy. And then he swings on the other guy. He hits, no... He either misses him or he toughs. Either way, there's one guy left in the zone. One little dude. So I score four points to zero. And the board looks like this. Fane Knight Guardian is here for his shield guard for Gareth. And I put Force Barrier on him. Um, and yeah. And I've got a good healthy amount of separation distance. Ah, but it doesn't matter. Um, he looks at the board. He looks at his options. He's, he congratulates him. He, he did a good job of sticking through it on my feet turn. He was pretty frustrated and having a hard time figuring out how to play the game in such a way that he doesn't either lose on scenario, get assassinated or anything. Cause he just felt like the feet was so repressive, a uh, suppressive basically, but he stuck through it. And he's at this spot now where he's feeling pretty good, realizing that he can either kill my entire army, except for basically like Imperatus or a couple of solos or something, or he can just kill Gareth. He opts to kill Gareth. So this unit of uh, Shard Pirates comes over here. They spray down and kill all eight Sentinels. Uh, no problem. Six of them do it. Oh, they got money shotted from Lord Rockbottom, and this unit got money shotted as well. Um Mr. Shea feats. All the shard, shard pirates move over. He casts Coop Domain. And with the, uh, the last now comes over here, seducts this uh, Sentinel and gets him out of the way. And with all these Sentinels out of the way, all uh, it's about seven or eight of these guys all... Oh, sorry, before any of that happened. Ogren Bogspar uh, ran himself over... Uh, outside of one inch of Gareth and turned him around outside of melee since they each have half inch melee. The uh, Commodore cannon slammed Bogspar right over the top of Gareth and this time he rolled more than one inch. Woo! Gareth got knocked down. All these shard pirates, now that Gareth is knocked down, they're more like right around in this area. They charge Gareth and between the assault sprays and everything else, they just absolutely annihilate him. I think he did like four attacks and Gareth died and between assault sprays and everything else he had I charge it. He had so many leftover attacks. It was a super reliable assassination run. If he didn't decide to do that though, um, he probably just slams Imperatus um, into the Dester here with the Commodore cannon, knocks him down and then just starts spraying down and killing everything over here. And probably at the end of the day, I'm left with Gareth, a couple of solos, and a half-dead Imperatus. Um, and then somehow, I have to scrape together some points and win on scenario. But I didn't even make it to that far. So that's uh, that Shea list. This Shea list is pretty dang scary. Um, I felt like I had good tools to play into it. But my golly money shot on those uh, six inch sprays and you, you hear six inch spray and you don't really take it seriously, but it's really good. It is very, very, very good. Uh, so talking about my play, I feel like for playing the list for the first time, I correctly realized that I had to win that turn. Um, I could have been less greedy and gone for three scenario points, but then I lose my entire army and I don't know. And he scores a couple probably. And I don't know if I can actually recover from that for another uh, scenario victory for a, a scenario type victory. Uh, so going for the assassination run might've been more reliable. I did not, I, I over allocated killing over here, but it, it was, it was just tight. 
um, on that left-hand side, leaving that one guy alive. I was really close. If I had sunk more clock into it, maybe I figure out a way to make it a little bit more reliable all the way around. Um, not going to beat myself up too much though. It's pretty easy in 2020 hindsight, but I'm, I'm just happy that I correctly realized, um, the situation I was in found two very viable win conditions and took the one that I felt was higher odds, uh, killing the objective, scoring this zone were pretty dang high odds. Um, I just, I needed, I needed better ways of taking care of that and how I should have fixed that is I probably just should, just should have allocated to Moros since he has paralyzed. It would have been pretty reliable for me to get rid of that unit on the left. Uh, if he had more focus to do stuff with the Arcanist loaded up Imperatus so that he could clear out the freebooter pretty reliably. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that was the key difference in that play. Oh, that assassination run. I'm, I'm going to guilt myself and regret not going for it, but you know what? I think, I think scenario was the right play. I want to beat myself up for not going for the assassination run, but Moros would have had to roll a 10 on three dice, which is about 50%. So that's one check right there that could have ruined the whole thing. Um, and then I also would have needed to kill the guy that was in front, which I would need to roll a uh, six on a ghost sniper to reliably kill. Now now that I remembered that Ghost Sniper's that deadly shot at the time, I forgot about it. Um, so that that's adding another check in the kink in the armor because if Eris is shooting that guy and Shay has, um, Shay has focus, my assassination run goes down in viability a little bit just because of there's not very many shots left. I'm looking at like two Desters and Imperatus and Gareth to take the shots to kill Shay, which are all doable, if he's paralyzed and if he has no focus, if he has focus, I don't know. Um, it's straight dice on the two fourteen, so I'm getting about 10 damage through between those. And then the Desters would also be straight dice. Um, I mean, it seems okay, but there's too many checks. There's too many check marks that I have to check. Too many boxes I have to check before I get there. So yeah, uh, great game. Um, hey guys, pay attention to this Shea list. It's pretty good. If you're a mercenary player, run it because it's cool. <laughs> you will probably win a couple of games at the start of most tournaments just because people do not recognize how far the Shard Pirates threat. And if they ask you what range attacks you, use, you have, you just say, I have six inch sprays and they'll just instantly discount you. Um, man, cool list. Uh, thank you for watching guys and let me know what you think. And hope everyone enjoys.